Kia ora guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Now I'm so excited, the beta truck, we're starting phase two of it. We've got it on the road, now it's time to build it into an off-roader. So uh, as you saw in the uh, wee b-roll at the start of the video, we've got a few mods to go on today. What we've got here is some um, Disco 1 front springs. Um, they give about an inch and a half lift in a Disco 2. We've got some 30mm rear spring spaces um, to raise the back up as well. I've also got some spring packers to get it actually level um, because they probably won't be quite enough. And then we've obviously got the Maxxis razors in a 285-75-16 on these beautiful terra firma alloy bead locks. So for those of you who watch the channel regularly, you'll probably recognize these. They were very briefly on my old M57 swap P38. However, I sold that, but I couldn't, uh, couldn't let those wheels and tires go with the truck. They're just too cool. So yeah, I'm really stoked I hung on to those because uh, I thought there'd be a D2 um, in the near future. So um, first things first, we want to get this thing measured up so we know exactly what the ride height is now so that when we lift the front we can see how much we've gone up so we can get the back level as well so I'll quickly measure up then get it on some jack stands and start pulling panels off what I'm going to do is take the front panels off and then pull the springs out put the big tires on cycle the suspension and take it from there but one thing to note is that when you're doing your references make sure that you measure from a known point on the body that you're not going to be cutting off so I went to this body line here because that's not going to change and then make sure you go to the center of the axle because if you go and then put bigger tires on that's going to change um, your reference if you say go to the ground so um, make sure center of the axle to something you're not going to be cutting and that way there's no chance of uh, messing up your calculations So we've got the truck in the air and we've got the axle stands under the chassis. Super important that when you're doing this you put it under the chassis and not any of the suspension arms or the axles itself as we're wanting to cycle the suspension. Well, I might have got a little wee bit carried away and decided to take the bumper off while I was at it. Um, it needed to happen anyway, so I figured while I was there I might as well. And it came off really nice and easily, other than the fact I accidentally pulled apart the uh, windscreen washer line. Um, it started draining wash fluid on the floor, so pop that back together and it's well, obviously stopped. But yeah, making good progress. So uh, I pulled the guard liners out and the bumper. Next is the guards. I know I've been talking about it the whole time, but they're finally coming off. Next step is to start pulling the suspension out. I'll pull the springs out and then put the shock absorbers back in. We're going to be running the factory length shocks for now just because it is very much a budget build. Um, but yeah, I will pull the springs out, put the shocks back in, and then we'll cycle the suspension um, through its range of articulation um, and travel uh, with the tyres on and check for any um, clearance issues. So yeah, we'll get into pulling it apart. Shock absorbers are disconnected. I've also just popped the brake line and ABS lines out of the wee bracket so we've got some more slack. And um, what we'll do now is we'll drop the axle down as far as we can. Um, now that the shock absorbers aren't limiting how far we can drop the axle. Um, and we'll go until the brake lines are pretty much tight. And uh, that hopefully will give us enough room to drop the springs out of the truck without having to use any spring compressors. But yeah, really, really nice and easy. Far out, I must say. Yes, I'm a sucker for a Disco 1, obviously, I've got like, I've had like, I don't know, 5 or 6 or 7 of them, but man, Disco 2's are so much nicer to work on, they're just so much better laid out, um, like, it takes 
couple people, realistically, if you've got seized shocks on the Disco one. Thus, these just like cruised on out. It's probably five minutes to uh, undo both sides. So, yeah, definitely nicer to work on. Anyway, let's drop this axle down and get these springs out. You know what I was just saying about Disco 2's being nice to work on? Well, <laughs> then stitched up when I dropped the axle down. The prop shaft hits this cross member and um, yeah. You can't drop the axle any further so it's either take the cross member out, take the drive shaft out or use spring compressors. I'll have a think. Seems alright, just the bushes a bit had it, but there we go, on spring out, I'll just go to the other side. Oh. So the shock absorbers are back hooked up so that we can limit our range of travel to what we know we'll actually have. And then we've also gone and pulled out this uh, front radius arm bolt here. Um, so the point of that is when you've got the weight of the vehicle on the truck, um, the vehicle can um, force the bushes to flex more than we're ever going to be able to do just with the jack. So by releasing one of the bolts from the radius arms, it allows us to cycle the suspension a lot easier so that it just makes essentially makes the whole lot of testing a lot easier. So anyway, um, that's all ready to go. Now we get to do the fun bit, wheels and tyres. So uh, I showed you them before but they are just the most beautiful wheels. Um, beadlock ready as well for if I ever feel like splashing out on a set of beadlock rings. However, um, these Maxxis razors, they've got a really nice tight bead and um, it took like 70 odd PSI to um, pop them onto the bead of this so um, to be honest for what we're going to be doing um, I'm plenty happy with just running them as is I'll still be able to air down nice and soft because of that snug fit on the bead of the rims um, and then yeah obviously the tyres, the Maxxis Razor Muddies um, and they're a 285-75-16 so that's a 33 by 11 and a half um, a little bit smaller than what I've been used to running lately, however um, I'm sure we'll get back to the uh, good old days of wheeling on small tyres and um, figure it out soon enough. So uh, with that I'm going to bolt them on, I've got some uh, new wheel nuts for it as well because they don't use factory wheel nuts. So I'm just going to bolt them onto the truck and then uh, jack it up to full bump um, and then we'll steer locked lock, check it there and then we'll take one side off and then flex up the truck and check it under full um, articulation as well. That's generally when you're going to get the most rubbing um, and if we need to extend the bump stops from there we can. Alright guys, how's the stance on that? That thing looks awesome! <laughs> It's amazing what a set of wheels and tyres does. Hmm, very cool. Righto, I'm going to stand and look at it for a couple of minutes, admire my work, and then we're going to push the axle up to full bump and uh, start checking for clearances. So that is the truck at full compression, um, actually had to do it in two stages as you saw because the jack didn't have enough travel, but uh, yeah, still got plenty of clearance around the top of the guard which bodes well for once we get it flexing, 
Um, I'm very happy with that. Obviously that is going to be a problem, so we'll probably just chop that back a little bit now. And then, hopefully not too bad at the front. As you can see when we push it around, uh, tire is touching. Um, so one of the really nice things about Disco 2s is they have incredibly wide axles, meaning you don't have to run much offset um, on your wheels. These are still a positive offset wheel, they're positive 20, which means you have a lot less of a scrub radius or scrub steer than if you're running big negative offset rims. However, even so, we're still rubbing. So uh, I'm going to say we're going to have to get in Take the tire off, get in, pull that straight, and then fold the whole lot around. So, I guess we'll crack into that. Righto, well, that's a bit more clearance gained. So, this did come forwards and then out. So, as you saw, I pulled the whole panel out and then folded it right back where it joins into the inner guard. Oh, guys, look at that, how good. Clearance, like a fingers width the whole way through, not too bad. Um, once we're at full articulation though, that's probably going to rub, so probably pull the tyre off. We know what, well, what I'll do, just come around this side so I can show you, because um, I've not folded this one back. Some hammering action on this rib here, and... Um, that should free us up enough movement, I'd hope. Oh dear, looks like we've got some uh, issues up the front. Good thing this washer bottle is going. As you can see behind me, I've got the tyre to full stuff on one side, fully flexed out on the other. And um, as you can see, it does go a lot higher. This is with it almost, almost compressing the bump stop. Uh, the bump stop is near impossible to see. In fact, it probably is impossible for you guys to see. I'm thinking maybe like a slight packer under the um, bump stop seat so that it doesn't come quite to the same amount of up travel as it used to. However, overall I'm really, really happy with uh, how it's looking. Um, yeah, that fits in there really nicely. A lot nicer than the Disco One guards where they kind of come up along here, but then it's a straight panel across there and it makes it a lot harder to uh, get a big tire in. So I've just spent the last probably five minutes playing with different uh, pieces of wood like this um, and just jamming it up. I don't know if you can see in there but there's a piece of wood back in there so that's where the bump stop is and I'm um, just putting different pieces of wood in um, to limit the suspension at different um, amounts of up travel and then steer, well put the truck through its range of steering at full um, flex and I'm really happy with where it's at. It's pretty pretty good range of steering at full bump. Obviously you want to Put as little bump stop extension in as possible because the more you extend that the uh, less up travel you have and up travel is key to a smooth ride off road um, but yeah at the same time you don't want to be chewing up your tires so the final step before just transferring everything across to the other side is to get the outer guard on and trim that to suit the tire so we'll do that while it's at full flex obviously because this is the furthest the wheels ever going to travel up Wait. In fact, that's pretty much perfect. Possibly even a little bit much. We've replicated everything from the first side over onto the second, so uh, we've got it all um, nice and hammered back there. 
Uh, trim the guard is the same as we did on that side, obviously. And we've now dropped everything back down. So next step is bump stop extensions. So I had a piece of wood, uh, this one here. It's about 18, 19 mil. Um, and it was set on top of the bump stop pad there when I was cycling it. So as I said before, we want to limit the uh, bump stop extension as little as possible. Um, however, we're going to have to do about about 20 mil. So I've got some material here. So what we're going to do is uh, trim it out and end up welding it on top of the um, pad there, um, just to extend it out that same amount. So we'll clean up the axle for welding. I've also got a diff guard there. It's a Gwyn Lewis weld on diff guard. Um, the front diff pans are very susceptible for, to being hit. So we're going to chuck a. Um, we're going to clean up on the diff pan as well um, to add that on, and then. Uh, do a little bit of welding on the front axle, <laughs> then we should be able to reassemble. chucking on this Gwyn Lewis 4x4 diff guard, best diff guards for a Land Rover, um, don't get clamp on ones, get weld on ones, clamp on one falls off. This is just going to go under there, as you can see we've cleaned up the three contact points and then we're going to drop the axle down and then we're going to uh, weld on the bump stop extensions while we're at it. Go. How do you feel about that one, Tim? Finally, some success. Alrighto, guys. Well, that is all in. Bump stop pad is tacked in. So, before we drop the axle and weld it out, I reckon we find some paint for it. Now, I told Ilsa she can choose whatever colour she wants <laughs> to paint the diff guard. So, uh, let's have a look at the different paint options. I don't know quite what... Oh, there's a few options. That's primer. I'll leave that out. We'll need that one anyway. Okay, yeah. We'll prime it first. Yeah, right. And then these are... I guess you could say we're currently making some prime time TV. Oh, oh, I know. This one. Oh, did you, how did you get that? This one? Oh, metallic baby poop. <laughs> do you not want it? <laughs> yes, let's do that colour. <laughs> so you like those two together? Sure thing. <laughs> so I settled on many different ones. So we have some primer that's essential. And then the purple and a sort of a gold colour together. And then over the top some sparkles. <laughs> So we've got the bump stop extensions welded in. Ended up coming up looking not too bad. That one and that one. So now flick some paint over those, paint the rest of the um, diff guard, and then we can start reassembling. I just want to do the whole under here while I'm at it. I was going to say, do you want to do the top of the truck? <laughs> Bit of a dilemma. Um, Apparently the inter well the internet says that Disco 2 springs should be 35mm shorter than Disco 1 springs. So I was going to slap some Disco 1 springs in. However, looking at them, they're looking awfully similar, which is weird. Because I have another set of D2 springs, which are definitely shorter. Which make me think these are like, I don't know, longer or something. But then they've got the factory paint marking on them. So I'm really confused and not quite sure what to do. I'm wondering about just slapping the Disco 1 springs in. Yeah. 
the old purple and champagne zebra. Oh, that was sort of like a fat zebra stripe. <laughs> and then there's going to be a little one that comes in here. Yeah, no, it's, it's looking artistic. Oh, darn. Well, it is now the moment of truth. Time to jack it up, take the axle stands out from under the chassis and see what our ride height's looking like. I have no idea if we've gained any lift at all going from the D2 to the D1 springs, but fingers crossed we gained a little bit because I really don't feel like pulling the springs out later on. Um, to be honest, I don't actually know what springs I'd put in anyway, but we'll get it figured out. And there was a bit of a stitch up. The sparkles was not sparkles. It was clear. Oh dear. Anyway. I should show you the final final result of uh, Ilsa's very, very spicy diff cover. You please. <laughs> it is my finest. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they better keep you off the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll uh, jack it up and uh, see how we're looking. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to need... Oh, what was that? Not slow. That's really low. Mm. <laughs> yeah. How much room to the bump stops have we got? Oh. Yeah, that's, that's less than ideal guys. We've got like two inches of up travel. That's going to make for a really rough ride. Hmm, bother. There's a guy on Facebook selling some plus two springs. Might have to get those. Hmm. Alright, well, I guess that, that's us for today. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one. Give us a like if you've enjoyed today's video. Leave a comment down below what you think of it, what you reckon of the beta truck, and um, yeah, we'll catch you all in the next one. Just watching, we'll see you then. You've probably been going for 12 hours by uh, the time you're in. Yeah. Getting close? Oh, nah, 10. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting like big clumps of glitter.